It's been a while since I've done a stash buster and viewers keep asking me to do one with jelly rolls. And you know I love a challenge. So today I have a cool pattern where value does all the heavy lifting. And to qualify to be a stash buster, not only do you shop from your stash, it's gotta be fast, it's gotta be easy, and there's gotta be little leftover scraps. Stay to the end for directions on how to download the free pattern. So stick with me and I'll show you how to do it. Hi there, I'm Karen Brown from Just Get It Done Quilts. I give you tips, tricks, and strategies to help you make the quilt that you want to make. And if you like what you see, please support the channel by hitting that subscribe button. This is my eighth quilt in the Stash Buster series and the first one where I use jelly rolls. This quilt is perfect for when you need a fast and easy project for a sudden gift or those times when you just need a simple project so that you can burn up your stash and take a break from a more complicated pattern. This pattern can be made several different ways depending on what you have. The finished quilt size is 56 inches by 56 inches without borders and requires 40 with the fabric strips that are two and a half inches wide and at least 43 inches long. This can be a jelly roll, one that you buy or one that you make or just 40 assorted strips, which might include old binding strips, scrapped with the fabric strips. You can even piece your scraps into strips, as long as they are two and a half inches wide by 43 inches in length. And you want to lay them out in two sets of 20, going darkest to lightest. The easiest part of working with a jelly roll is this is often already done for you and you just simply have to separate them into two sets and take a photo for reference. If you are making a set with your own strips, organize them darkest to lightest, take a black and white photo, and then make any adjustments you want. You might be asking why a black and white photo? It's all about a color's value, which I go into in more detail in my color series. I'll put a link in the notes below. Then pair the two lightest together, then the next two together, then the next two together until you have 20 pairs. Then I mark the fabrics one to 20. I use stickers and clips. You can use numbered pins or mark the number on the pins, but if you want, you can even use a piece of paper and pin that. Take the set number one and the set number 20 and make a stack of four strips. Trim the selvage from one side and then cut at two and a half inches. Cut the remaining piece at 40 and a half inches. Take your marker number one and attach it to the smaller stack. Take your marker number 20 and attach it to the larger stack. Then take set number two and 19 and make a stack of four strips. Trim the selvage from one side and then cut at four and a half inches and then cut the other strip at 38 and a half inches. Put the number two marker on the small stack and put the 19 on the larger stack. Take set number three and set number 18 and make a stack of four. Trim off the selvages and then cut at six and a half inches and cut the remaining stack at 36 and a half inches. Put your marker number three on the small stack and put the marker number 18 on the tall stack. And we are going to repeat this for the remaining set number four, 17, five and 16, and so on. And when you are done, you will have 20 stack sets. Don't worry about writing down all these measurements. They are going to be in the pattern. Take your stack number one and lay them out. You're going to have two light and two dark. Then take your stack number two. We are going to sew strip set number two to the right of strip set number one. Keep dark with dark and light with light. Then we are going to take stack number three and sew them to the left side. And then stack number four, and we're going to sew that to the right side. Then number five on the left, and then number six on the right. You get the idea. We're going to do this until we get to 20. And it really is this simple. However, you need to sew straight and iron well so that your block strips are perpendicular to each other. So let's just pause for a second and review a couple of good practices. 
use a ledge. I showed how to make one in my video, Five Sewing Hacks with Masking Tape, and it's really crucial that the ledge is straight and in the right place. So make a couple of practice pieces out of your scraps and adjust your ledge until it's in the right place. Use a leader and sew right off the end here so that you can chain piece. There are more tips in my video, How to Sew Straight. And when you iron, set your seams and then finger press, pushing the fabric away from the center. Remember, no swishing. For a complete description of this method, see my video, A Really Good Ironing Technique. And for this block, I will alternate using the seam roller on the even seams and ironing on the odd, just to save myself a trip to the ironing board. Now, as you sew, you might be tempted to trim this tail off, but don't. You'll quickly realize that you need that tail when you sew on the next strip. And just be aware that this edge on the bottom of this block is on the bias. And to avoid stretching it while you're sewing your blocks together and quilting it, it's best to stabilize it. And I think the simplest way is just with a basting stitch. Set your stitch length as large as it can go. I put mine to a six and make a long basting line just at the edge. Oh, and remember to change that stitch length back. Ask me how I know. But you can also use tape or iron on interfacing if you prefer. And as you can see, I found it much easier to work all four blocks at once. But if you rather work on one at a time, that's okay too. And for this version, you end up with two versions of the blocks. One pair goes dark to light and the other pair goes light to dark. Lay the dark block down with the right angle corner on your right. Lay your light block down on top, aligning the right side. Pin as necessary and sew. Then repeat with the other pair. Iron and press to the dark side. On a flat surface, line up the long sides of the block so that the seams in the middle nest. Then keeping the block flat, pin the strips from the middle out to the ends. Sew this seam together. And you're done. And at this point, the quilt top measures 56 inches by 56 inches. You may elect to put borders on. I do need my quilt to be just a little bit longer because I have tall people in my family. Because the strips are all two inch wide finish, I decided that my border should be a multiple of that. So I cut three two and a half inch strips and made one long strip. And from this, I cut two 56 and a half inch pieces and I pinned and sewed them to the sides. Then I cut three six and a half inch strips and I made one long strip from these. And then I cut two 60 and a half inch strips and sewed those to the top and the bottom. Unfortunately, there were almost no scraps left over at the end of the, making this quilt. I only had enough to make this stack of hexes. Funny how shopping from your stash can surprise you. I dug into my stash and found this flannel and found it had the perfect colors to match my front. I knew it was there. I purchased it for Christmas gifts that I have yet to find the time to make. I made the back in three pieces. It had a bit of a nap to it. So I cut a 78 inch length and then I cut another 40 and cut that in half and sewed that to the sides. This pattern is perfect for quilting on a domestic sewing machine. Grab your walking foot and quilt straight lines just following the strips or do wavy lines, even easier, and work one section at a time. Now, you know I have a new long arm and though I really like this design, it's not easy to do when I only have this amount of working space. So I am using this quilt to practice my pantograph skills. Again, shopping for my stash is making me dig into fabrics I wouldn't normally go to. But it turns out I had a fabric that matched the colors in the quilt top really well. This is one of the first fabrics I ever purchased. And I decided to make a tight 
quarter inch binding, so my strips are only two and a quarter inches wide. If you did not put a border on your quilt, a one inch binding in one of the darker colors would look fabulous on this quilt. If you haven't watched my binding series yet, which shows you how to make wide and narrow binding, I'm gonna leave a link in the notes below. And I am pretty darn happy on how this turned out. I might even make another one. If you wanna check out one of my other Stash Buster videos, I'm gonna leave a link here. They burn through your stash, they're fast, they're easy, little or no wastage, and free to all my viewers. I have this pattern for download, along with all my other Stash Buster patterns on my website, just get it done quilts and I'll put a link in the notes below. Last week on Karen's Quilt Circle I had Jennifer Mankey and we were talking about quilting for a cause. I'll put a link in the notes to that as well. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell beside the subscribe button so that YouTube will notify you when I make new videos. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest at Just Get It Done Quilts and of course you can subscribe to my newsletter at JustGetItDoneQuilts.com. So take care and I'll see you next time. Next time.